The earnings alert shares of Lennar on the move after reporting that it beat bottom line estimates in Q3, but revenues fell short. KB Home also turning in a report with mixed results. Diana Olek has been looking over these results. Diana, what are the details here? Well, Melissa, it was, as you said, a nice beat for Lennar in Q3. EPS coming in at $5.03 a share versus estimates of four eighty eight. dollars Revenue a little light, though, at $8.9 billion, but still up 29% year over year. And revenues were higher primarily due to a 13% increase in the number of home deliveries and a 15% increase in the average sales price to $491,000 from four twenty eight. dollars that was surprising to me. Now, Lennar Chairman Stuart Miller said supply chain constraints while improving still continue to limit deliveries. New orders were down 12 percent year over year, but starts were still consistent, driven by adjusting prices and incentives. Miller also said sales have clearly been impacted by rising interest rates, but there remains a significant national shortage of housing, especially workforce housing, and demand remains strong as we navigate the rebalance between price and interest rates. Lennar's inventory of finished homes, though, and homes under construction rose 24 percent from the end of the last fiscal year. And, Melissa, I see that as a red flag. What, what is this talk about the rebalance of price because of interest rates when prices have gone up? I mean, well, I assume so that's, that's what really you were surprised. Didn't, yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of sense yeah. in the report, to be honest, because they had prices up 15 percent, and they were talking right. about, you know, adding incentives, buying down the mortgage rate, and potentially lowering prices. And in the home builder sentiment report earlier this week that we got, they reported one quarter of builders said they were lowering prices. So then you see this average sale price for Lennar going up. You have to wonder, are the more expensive homes selling and that's skewing the average higher? Or what is it exactly? Because it doesn't sound like they're lowering prices, but then he's saying, well, we're rebalancing with prices. So, yeah. Questions. All right, Diana, thanks. <laughs> Diana Olek. All right, Steve, so we were just talking about how Main Street's going to feel pain and what is holding up is housing. And if he's going to break the back of inflation, that's got to come down. Sounds like they're selling, <clears throat> they're selling less homes for more money. Uh, th that was my takeaway right there. So you, think, you would think that the inflation in the housing, the actual price of the home, has to be coming in or sooner, sooner or later will be coming in, which means that their bottom line will be less. You cannot think in a rising rate environment that they are going to earn more money going forward. Right. So what does that mean for a Home Depot? Because you like to go yeah, over there, I, literally I, and, and trade wise. I, look, I do. I do. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a junkie for the Black & Decker tools and whatnot. But you, you, you have a dynamic with the home builders where I do think um, you're going to have to see price compression. Rates going higher, even in the mortgage market, also affects what you can spend on a house. Um, I, I, look, home Depot is trading just above a market multiple. It trades at a premium to lows. I'd rather own lows in this environment. I think they both can pull back more. Again, I, I've mentioned 250 is an area I want to start nibbling some more. I am long Home Depot, but I don't need to own more here. I, I think there could be more pain. Karen, home improvement retail? Yeah, I own some. I would like to buy more. Uh, I think they're both great companies. I think that the sentiment around it right now is pretty terrible, but the valuation has come in a lot. And I think about, I mean, ultimately, uh, these are great businesses to own. Okay. I have more to buy.